All right, we're back with another level. Uncle Ben's killer is located at the top of the warehouse. Thanks for my latest hint, game. But one of the things that I wish the Insomniac games would incorporate from this game is the web gloves. Like, technically, Insomniac has their own version of them, sort of. In the first game, you have the ability to give your give yourself quad damage. I always thought it was weird that they didn't represent quad damage as Peter putting, like, web knuckle dusters on his hands and just punching people with those. And it'd be an easy way to incorporate web gloves. Oh yeah. Meant to do this. There we go. There's usually a yellow spider in here, but I've already gotten it. If you press the R3 button, you'll enter look around mode. In this mode, a targeting reticle will appear which you can aim with the right analog stick. When the reticle turns green, you're in zip range, baby. Press the R1 button to zip to the point you're aiming at, or press R3 again to exit look-around mode. This is essentially how you free aim with your web zipping powers. Looks like the freak wants to play. I remember this room could be pretty difficult just because they pile on you. Finally. Man, look at my health. Hey, I found the key. It's always random about who has it, too. You just have to keep fighting until you pick up the guy who has it. Okay, there's gotta be... Yes. Okay, I was gonna say, there has to be some health line around here somewhere. Let's face it, there's nothing more embarrassing than getting whacked by some thug you lost track of. If you press the L1 button, you'll lock the camera view to your enemy so you can keep track of where he is. You can move the right analog stick to switch between multiple enemies. Alright. And... Alright. Now where do I go from here? Better save this for when I need it. I guess I'm going this way. Why am I running into a wall? Haha. <laughs> I forgot all about that steam trap because I don't think I ever got hurt by it. Whoa! Right now he's tracking me. Damn! Look at that buckshot he's got. Once again, I'll Don't cut the up. game slack because this is early Peter Parker, but... All of us Spider-Man fans know that Spider-Man can fight while blind. We've also always seen in No Way Home where his body will react to stuff happening to him even when his soul is not in it. Getting away from me, murderer. Shut up. 
most of your web attacks won't work very well against him because he breaks out of um, getting webbed up too quickly. Fuck. He can dodge your impact webbing. Fuck. Holy shit. There you go. Take you down. Yeah, there we go. Dive bomb for the win. He can't do crap. I can just combo him. My way. Ha! I win! Ugh. Through bullshit methods, but hey, the, the programs put the game in there. I mean, put the move in there. Now, in terms of how Uncle Ben actually did die in the books, it's very different from the comics. I'm, it's very different than it was in the movie. In the books, yes, Peter does let the robber escape from the wrestling contest the same way he does in the movie. The only difference is that Uncle Ben isn't killed during a carjacking. The burglar ended up going to Peter's house while Uncle Ben was the only one there. And it was later also established that Uncle Ben was a war veteran. So it's assumed that the burglar broke into the Parker household, went looking for belongings. Uncle Ben saw him and tried to fight him off, and then that's when Uncle Ben got shot. And then Peter, I think Aunt May, finds Ben's body in their house. And the burglar later comes back to the house, like later on after Peter became Spider-Man, thinking, oh, there's some, like, Parker treasure in this house. Spider-Man shows up terrifies the burglar so much that he has a heart attack and dies. So yeah, very different than how the movie covered it, but I understand why the movie made it completely different. But thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next part. Peace.